running through the basics, Winona is a character that has five character specific items, which include tape, the generator, the generator, catapults, and a spotlight. Going through the most, I would say, useless ones, spotlights and generators don't really matter. And the reason is the spotlight's uses are significantly too minimal to really be worth fussing about. The generators, while cheap, tend to be a strictly inferior versions of generators. And at a certain point, Niter becomes a hassle to carry around. And the cost of gems isn't something that you really have to worry about due to the nature of Winona Farms. Obviously, this is my opinion, so take it as you will. There's some scenarios where you might want to use generators as opposed to generators, and some scenarios where you would want to use a uh, spotlight, though I don't really see much use in them. Tape is a really good alternative to sewing kits. It stacks to a higher extent, so it's really good to just carry around. You can use it to patch up boats, which is always nice. And the biggest thing that sticks out is that these things are used in everything. The generators are the best use of fuel to power all of the Winona structures. They do cost gems, but they last significantly longer. And gems in Winona farms aren't necessarily costly because they tend to pay for themselves down the line. The generators are the best tier of generator that Winona can make. I would highly recommend relying on these more than relying on the standard base generators in 99% of circumstances. Catapults are the cream of the crop. They are the reason that you play this character because they have the most room for development and the best source of farms for most mobs in this game. So she only has catapults going for her? While kind of yes, that is more than enough. When you properly set up catapults, they can be some of the best structures in the game. But the setup is where it gets complicated. So I'm going to give you an idea of the basics of how to set up catapults, the general ideas of them, as well as show you some farms where these concepts are put into practice. There are two general ideas of how to set up Winona farms, which are the bunkers versus the bombardments. Now, bombardments are just purely meant to output raw DPS towards a target, and they're really only useful in certain scenarios. So I'm going to be covering those first, just because they're pretty self-explanatory and I just kind of want to get them out of the way. So the bombardment is really useful during Bee Queen setups, most notably. They're also useful in Fuel Weaver and other bosses that you might want to automate with these, if not just add bonus DPS. There are a lot of ways to place the catapults. Typically, you start by placing a generator and then putting catapults around that generator so that whatever you're trying to target is within the range of most all of the catapults that you're going to place. You can fit up to nine if you disable geometric placement, which is what I tend to run, or if you just don't have geometric placement and you place them all around the outside, right at the border of where they can be placed in relation to the generator. I typically go for the symmetrical six catapult setups whenever I can, but sometimes you could use less or more. The amount of catapults vary between farms. If you're setting up a farm where the monsters won't eat their own loot, and you can afford to take your time with this, then you can set up as low as like one or two. But more catapults means faster kills. So if you're farming something like pigs where they will eat their own loot, then you want as many as you can get. Bombarding enemies is pretty self-explanatory in terms of what you set up. Really, you just want to output as much damage as you need to in order to help deal with whatever boss or enemy that you're facing. An example of this is Bee Queen, which is easily the most prominent type of these farms. In my experience, only six catapults per each of the four generators tend to yield the best results, but you can set up even more than that. It would just cost more gems because each catapult drains the generator for a certain amount. Setting up for Fuel Weaver is tends to be pretty good just because the added DPS helps a lot, as well as the fact that the catapults kill the Woven Shadows for you, meaning he won't heal. Dragonfly is also an option, but it is a little more volatile. The reason is, if Dragonfly gets enraged, then she could harm most of your catapults, as well as you're probably going to want a Flingomatic just in case something catches fire. The Dragonfly setup is a little tricky, since you do need to box in the Lave so that your catapults don't burn, but for the most part, if you box them in and you have indestructible walls in places where the catapults will damage, then you should make it through the fight relatively unscathed. 
though this is a very volatile farming method so i can't really recommend it in all good faith but it's the option's still there if you need it moving on to the bunker ideas the idea of behind these is you want yourself or the catapults in most cases to be fortified by walls keep in mind i'm not talking about these types of walls i'm talking about these type of walls the walls that the game explicitly gives you as walls aren't recommended since they do get destroyed by catapults so if you say set them up right next to a pig farm or something then the catapults might just end up targeting not only the pigs but the walls due to their inherent aoe damage so rather than using these types of walls you should instead use statues bone fossils or end tables i would personally would recommend statues just because they're the cheapest of these options but just know that these other two options are still there statues are great for keeping enemies out of an area and for keeping things in if you're on pc i'd highly recommend installing the place statues mod on by Trenose on the steam workshop it helps a ton and is what i use for most of my statue placements if you don't want to or are unable to install the mods then an alternative is to use the divots of walls and drop them in between each portion, which I'll show off here. Statues are indestructible structures that mobs can't see, or at least can't perceive to be there. So they'll just constantly walk towards them if they're aligned in such a way where you can't just walk around. However, moving statues is time consuming and the statues themselves can be costly. If you're in a world where you have the option, I'd recommend swapping to Wolfgang or Walter for moving statues. Or, an alternative is you could just aim beef below. The general idea is if you aren't able to walk past them, then other mobs won't be able to do the same. You can pen in enemies with normal walls and have one side lined up with statues so that you can reap the full rewards of an enemy being penned in, but still have access to the statues. If you put up a wall in front of an entrance, it allows you to walk around it, but the enemies will try to take the shortest path towards you, not realizing that there's statues in the way. While you might be thinking, I'll just replace all of my walls with statues. You should know that the limits of these walls are there. When statues are unloaded, the statues don't necessarily count as being there, meaning that a lot of the mobs that are trapped inside of it or outside of them will just walk on through like they didn't exist. Because for all intents and purposes, they don't. It's not advised to make all of your walls out of statues, especially for things like bait pens for pigs, merms, and bunny men. So those ones you should just use walls and find other methods to aggro them. Know thy enemy has never been truer than in this scenario. Whenever you're dealing with a certain enemy, the more familiar you are with their behavior, the more ways that you could think of to abuse it. There's a ton to be said about this, but I'll go through the big farms and that most people would rather have automated and how to deal with their the AI. There's a ton to be said about this, but I'll go through the big farms that most people would rather have automated and how to deal with their AI, such as pigs. Bog farms. This farm design is roughly based off of Gabriel Gabriel's design. So I'll link his video in the description and probably pin it in the in the comments below. The benefits of the Varg farm and why I tend to prioritize them is just because they provide gems. Gems are going to be really useful for fueling all of your Winona structures, such as the generators that we're going to use for all the catapults, as well as just general gem usage. Building a Varg farm is pretty simple once you know how it works. The basic idea is for you to keep the hounds and the catapults separated in kind of a bunker. You have to keep the hounds a far enough distance to where they won't be able to attack the catapults and be sure to put a flingomatic on this farm since you're going to need it to deal with the fire hounds. I like putting a fire pit and an endothermic fire pit in place of one of the statues whenever you can just because having both of them can help in seasons where overheating and freezing are an issue and it'll take the edge off on fire hounds. The reason this works is that the Varg spawn hounds end up prioritizing food over combat so it's really easy to lure them away. The Varg spawn hounds don't attack walls so you can and should just have vargs penned in with walls over most anything else the hounds will endlessly try to go towards the bait in the middle of the structure this one being the bait pen inside of the catapult enclosure you really do have to be careful about putting the statues too close or too far away from the hounds because if it's too close then the catapults will aggro onto the vargs if it's too far the vargs will spawn hounds inside of the actual enclosure Catapults have a little bit more range than is indicated, because if a catapult hits a hound at the edge of the line, the AoE of the boulder will hit any walls that are 
outside of the initial range. You want to put the catapults just out of range of where they will hit the walls. About 4.5 tiles away from the Varg pen is a pretty good approximation of where you should put it. Be sure to not use this as a hound trap, as the hounds from the hound waves will target the walls that are keeping Vargs in, and they'll let them loose. This farm was actually something I thought of a while back, and the basic idea is putting the catapults in a sort of blast shield, where the pigs weren't able to attack the catapults because they couldn't reach, but the early designs were pretty bad, but I think I worked out most of the kinks. The basic idea is you just want to put a wall of statues between the pigs and the catapults. The issue with this was, how do I get them to stay out during a full moon? To solve this, I built on the old classic pig farm design that you see in most places where pigs just constantly run towards bait and they'll stay out throughout the entire night. But later, I found out a workaround to how you could actually lure the pigs to go to you rather than having to take out the bait and then rebait something else. So pigs, I found out, prioritize combat before they go after food. So to use this farm design that I'm showing, it's recommended that you have a Weber, Wartox, or Wirt. If none of these are readily available, killing a Spider Queen wearing her hat or using Wirt's clever disguise, you can aggro the pigs because they will see you as a target and go towards you. This might be a lot of setup and you might be thinking, well, if it's just like the classic pig farm, why would I use it? The answer is that you could use this farm on cooldown, which is incredibly good. Pig farms with catapults can be activated on cooldown with relative ease. Naturally, you won't get as much loot as you would on a full moon in each instance, but the fact that you're doing it for multiple times, it opens a window and just provides you with more overall. They scale significantly better in the long run. Because catapults have AoE damage, they will clear out large quantities of pigs at a time, so you can really make your pig farms a lot larger than you would typically be able to do through other means. The basic idea is that you pen the spiders in with statues to give them a wide berth. The spiders will aggro onto you since they're initially hostile and will try to attack you when they wander over to where you are. Having two layers of statues is recommended though, since spiders are small and because of the sheer amount of them, the entity push caused by them might make them forced out of the pen. The idea is pretty simple, it doesn't just farm spider items, it farms spider queens. It's a little excessive, but sometimes that's what your goal is. Overall. Winoda is a really strong character with really strong late game farming capabilities and I would highly recommend that you give her a try and try thinking of some ways that you can incorporate Winona catapults and the designs that come with them into your own playthrough. Whether you choose to or not, fine. At the very least, I hope I open somebody's eyes to how good the character is because I think top three character in the game. But if you enjoyed what you see, feel free to live like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. I will talk to y'all later. Bye bye.